Hello, welcome to Voice of Faith in Mirimwangi official YouTube channel. My name is Mirimwangi. This program is sponsored by Montek Media. They are videographers and photographers in Zimmerman. If you want to shoot a video or take photos, you can contact them. Uh, our guest today has a story of how he was rejected by parents and he was sexually abused at a very early age. Now, without further ado, let me welcome our guest. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for finding time for us. Thank you for having me. Uh, maybe you can start by introducing yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us your name and where you come from. Um, my name is Ekra Maria Waithera. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my names are a bit confusing because I have an official name, which is Mary Waithera Minor. But then I use Ekra Maria as my artist name. Okay. Yeah. So I was born in Thika, a place called uh, Kiandutu. Mm -hmm. mm, and then I think we moved from there under very bad circumstances because my mom and the man who had married had disagreed and uh, she left. She used to drink a lot, so the marriage did not work. So she left us with the man, me and my brother. Uh, before we go there, mm -hmm. Ezra, did you school in Kiandutu? No. Okay. I was just born there. Okay. We stayed a little bit, a, a, a very short while. My mother left us, and then the, the man she had left us with decided this is a burden for me. I cannot be able to raise these kids because we were like twins. So he decided, because my mom was born in Moranga, mm -hmm. let me take them to, to their maternal grand, grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, along the way, he, uh, b before reaching home, he saw a, a, a woman who was farming uh, along the road. And, she, and he thought, because maybe he knew he wasn't doing something right, he decided to leave us with the lady who was farming and like dumped us to her in a cunning way because you cannot just leave kids and go without a word. Yeah. And how old were you at that time? I think we were very little because we could not even pronounce our own names, mm -hmm. me and my brother. Yeah. So after he went, he, he lied to the lady and, and went, he never came back. So the lady took care of us the whole, uh, the whole time. Wow until it, it came, her time to go to, to, to her home came and she thought, was this man going to come back? Then she, she realized it's like he, he just disposed the kids to her and just left without, without her knowing. Mm -hmm. So she took us to her place, she bathed us, uh, and we, we, we spent the night with her that day, that night. And the following morning, morning she thought, uh, let me take these children to the area chief so that uh, we can know what to do from there. Mm -hmm. So she took us to the area chief of that place where, uh, it is the same area where my, my mom was born. In Moranga. In Moranga. Mm -hmm. So she takes us to chief's office the chief hears our names, how we are calling each other, and he relates our, our names with my grandfather, mm -hmm. my maternal grandfather. Yes. And she, he thought of calling him because he was just around, he, he was at Eira, uh, around that village or that, that small town. Mm -hmm. So he calls our grandfather, and the grandfather identifies us he automatically knew we were uh, his daughter's mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So he decided to go and call our grandmother to come, to come and pick us. And my grandmother takes us home. So uh, after reaching home, we stayed there for, for, for quite a while. And uh, my grandmother now started raising us together with her kids that were still uh, growing up. Mm -hmm but they were now bigger than us. But uh, during that period, my mother, we never, we, we never saw her come home or even coming to look for us. 
we only stayed with the grandfather and grandmother. And now there was this, there was this man uh, who tried, who started abusing me mm -hmm. in the home. Mm -hmm. He's one of the people in the home. So this man tells me every day, I want you to go and climb on a bed and remove all your clothes. Wait for me there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he could threaten me to, to cut me into pieces with a machete mm -hmm. because he could come from maybe grazing or cutting grass somewhere with a machete and he would throw it on a, 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 outside the home. In a very, in a very threatening way. At this point, mm -hmm. were you a school going girl? No. Or, I'm so not you were me. young. Girl. Yeah, I was very young. Okay. Yeah, I can't, I can't really remember the age I was. Mm -hmm. The, but I remember the words what he used to tell me okay. now in my vernacular, mm -hmm. and and how he used to threaten me that if I dare tell anyone, mm -hmm. he would cut me into pieces. Okay. So I was very scared. You, 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 you can imagine a little girl who doesn't know anything, who have no one to confide in. Mm -hmm. So I was very terrified of that man. Every day he could come and tell me the same words. So he used to do that, not once, many times. Wow. Yeah, as long as I lived there, mm -hmm. he, he, he abused me, tortured me mentally, and made my life a living hell. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after a, a, a period of time, there is one of my auntie who came and took me to Nairobi to stay with her. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether she suspected mm -hmm. or it was just out of generosity. I am not sure. But she took me and left my brother there. We started staying with her. Mm -hmm. I think by the time she was now trying to figure out on how to take me to school, and all that, mm -hmm. my mother reappeared. Okay. Now when she, she reappeared, she took me from my auntie's place and took my brother from my grand, grandmother's place. Mm -hmm. And we went to a place called Nyahururu in a slum called Kiamaina, Kiamaina village, down at Nyahururu, where they sell alcohol and, and everybody is messed up. Uh -huh. You know, life in the slums. Yeah. So that is where she... The Changadens. Yeah, the Changadens. Mm. That is where she went and started raising us, and that is where she took us to school. Okay. We started from nursery, and I think we went the same year, me and my brother, and we did nursery, and then uh, we were, we, she took us to a public uh, primary school, yeah. which was very far away. I do not understand her reasoning because there was a school nearby, mm -hmm. but, she, but she chose to take us to a far away school where we, were, we, we could go along a forest. Mm -hmm. And it was a dangerous forest. Now we, we had to go as a group, yeah. many children together, mm -hmm. so that any danger that can occur in the way, we could know how to help each other. Mm -hmm. So we could go to school. We reached there very late. Sometimes she would, she would take alcohol, forget she had kids. Mm -hmm. She will not even wake up, arise in the morning to prepare us for school. Some, some days there were nothing to take before going to school. You, you see this, this ugari we cook and put water in, this, in the pot mm -hmm. for it to wet. We could squeeze that those remain, the remainders of the ugali, wow. we could eat that mm -hmm. while go, uh, for breakfast. Yeah, for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So it was that tough. And uh, uh, Was your mother doing this changa business or yeah. she was okay? Yeah, she could sell mm -hmm. and she could take. Okay. So life was that uh, complicated for us. You can now imagine these two young children who knows nothing, mm -hmm. very little, who cannot be able even to take care of even one another. So we, we continued going to school. Mm -hmm. At some points, she could even go to take those changa, forget she had locked the door, and we would sleep outside the door. Mm -hmm. The neighbors were tired of hosting us every day. So some, sometimes we, we slept 
we spend the night outside in the cold, sometimes in the rain, and it was tough. Yeah. Uh, then she, she was many times uh, arrested because of the illegal changa mm -hmm. selling, and, and uh, she could be thrown into a police vehicle. Mm -hmm. Like a, like something that is not any of any importance mm. because she was violent. Oh. Uh, yeah, a, a one policeman could not hold her. And at that time, Alkwa na kunywa hati hadiski. Yeah. Or, okay. Ana kunywa until she's totally wasted. Okay. So when she's she's arrested, mm -hmm. she would scream and say, "Bring my children! I will not leave them." Mm -hmm. My brother sometimes would just find a way to to just get away of the situation mm -hmm. but myself i was just there <laughs> she's my mom yeah, you know yeah. so i would be taken with her to the police station mm -hmm. when we reach there the 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 policeman will just throw her in the cell mm -hmm. but i'll be left outside the compound wow. now in the night mm -hmm. these policemen will abuse me they will put me on the ob the, this table they write people's cases. Yeah. They would put me there. Maybe they will give me some kasuit or a mandazi or a snack. Mm -hmm. They will now abuse me with, with that friendly way. Wow. They, they think they are, they are making me happy. But And then mm -hmm. I did not know what it was. Mm -hmm. Even my, my, that other guy who used to abuse me in the, in the rural place, yeah. I did not understand what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So right alone when I was grown a bit mm -hmm. is when I got to realize it was defilement. Mm -hmm. I was abused yeah. because then I was little, I was just wondering, what are these people doing to me? Mm -hmm. So my mother could have many lovers. Some of them would abuse me as well. So that, that became like my lifestyle. Wow. Yeah. But myself, I could not understand what was happening to me mm -hmm. and what they were doing to me. But I, I thought, at the back of my mind, I thought it was something bad because of the threats mm -hmm. that I was told. Even the policeman could tell me, don't tell anyone mm -hmm. that I did this to you. So I could figure, like, it is not something good, mm -hmm. but then why are they doing it? So it, it continued like that until a, uh, a time came, I think I was going out to class two. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother gets another husband. Yeah, and she, now we moved from that slum, no, no, no. we went to another town, mm -hmm. and I, even there I continued going to school, I think I joined class two, and, and continued. So, I, And all this time, mm -hmm. you did not share what was going through your life with your auntie, with your shosho, with your mother? No, okay. I did not tell anyone, mm -hmm. because of the threats. Okay. So I was scared saying, talking about it because I thought I would be killed mm. or anything. Yeah. And then I, I did not have that much uh, knowledge. knowledge to mm. know or even to figure out I can share with anyone. Yes. Yeah. And that is why I would encourage parents mm. to always be close to their children. Yeah. Monitor how they are faring mm. because some of them might be bullied somewhere and they are scared to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, especially mothers, it is possible for you to note or to sense yeah. when something is wrong with your baby. Mm -hmm. Be close to them. Let them know they have a place, a safe place in you. Mm -hmm. Because my mother was very hostile to me. Anything, any small mistake mm -hmm. I could make with the, in anything I do, I, she could beat me very badly. I think my mother rejected me the moment she, she got to know I, I was in her womb mm -hmm. because she was also going through a lot. She had gone through rejection from the father. The father had, had uh, insulted her so much, refused to take her to school. Mm -hmm. She could be like the person, the mother in the house or the one taking care of the brothers. Okay. The brothers was, were taken to school, so her and the aunt who had to taken me were the ones who were taking care of everything in the home, mm -hmm. including going around the village, collecting disposed food for the pigs because they, the father used to, to farm pigs. 
to pay school fees for his children. Mm -hmm. So my mother was bitter about that. It's like the father used her and insulted her and he never showed her love. Okay. So she was bitter in life. And during that period, she left home, she ran away, and then went and got pregnant with me. Mm -hmm. So I think because of that, she, she was frustrated and now she could take it out on me. So she was very hostile to me. Okay. Now, and, uh, did you complete school? Or? No, uh -huh. I continued going to school mm -hmm. in that place where now she's got, she had gotten married. Mm -hmm. But now the man who had got married her was a witch doctor. My goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the witch doctor could uh, do everything, her business around us. We could see everything. Mm -hmm. Like he would ask people for her chickens, ducks, goats. She would ask for people to remove their inner hairs, cut a piece of your panty and all those things. Mm -hmm. While we could see. Wow. And we were given those, you, you see these Kenyaji things they cook from the trees. Roots. The concussion. Yeah, those things. Mm -hmm. We were given and it was a must. Every morning we could take them. And they were very bitter. Okay. It was a must for us to take them. I don't know the reasoning and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But they, they give us every morning mm -hmm. before we take anything. So a, 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 a man or a woman could come they put those waters in a basin, tells you to bathe mm -hmm. in that water, and the water would change into soil. And is it true? Yeah, I could see it. <laughs> so I, was, I used to wonder, when you see I am, I am only, maybe let's say I was 10, 11. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering where did that soil come from? Wow. Later alone when I grew up, mm -hmm. I, be, I became, I came to understand it was witch, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And my mother was the assistant to him. So we grew in that environment. And then after some time, my mother leaves us with that witch doctor. Mm -hmm. Like he had, she had left us with the other, the other man mm -hmm. who disposed us. Goes to somewhere in Akuru, lives for a whole year. And we are I'm left with, them, with my brother there and this man mm -hmm. and his business of witchcraft. And I was like the mother of that home. Mm -hmm. Everything, I go to the river, fetch water, come wash clothes, wash utensils, cook, and I still have my homework. Mm -hmm. I will also help my brother. There is another brother we had found there. So life was very tough for me as I was growing up. Yeah. And I, I think I matured early, early, very early in life, mm -hmm. especially with the kitchen chores and womanhood mm -hmm. yeah I, I i matured very early so we how can... did your father at this moment your mother has left for mm -hmm. one year mm -hmm. how did now the stepfather treat you he treated me well okay but as, at some point he told me to move from our bed we used to sleep the three of us my brother and the the other brother we had found there mm -hmm. he told me to move from where we used to sleep and join him in, in his bed wow yeah he also had the thoughts of abusing me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether it is his witchcraft mindset that did not allow, mm -hmm. because he, at, the, at, at the point he wanted to do that, he did not succeed. He just stopped like someone who had, was shocked. Mm -hmm. Or in a way, I don't know, maybe God did not allow it, or okay. maybe if it, he succeeded, something bad would have happened. Mm -hmm. I, I never understand even today. Okay damaged my uterus or anything, or maybe I could have gotten pregnant. Mm -hmm. By that time, I think I was 12. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I think God just did not allow him to abuse me. Mm -hmm. That is the only person who did not succeed. Okay. Yeah. So we lived with him. We could eat a lot of chickens because they are, they are being brought <laughs> every time. Kumbe wanazichukwaga wanakula. Yeah, they, they, we, we, I could cook them. I know how to chinja a chicken very well. Mm -hmm. Cut it into pieces, even cutting its head. At the age of I know time. everything about, about uh, making a chicken mm -hmm. because I, I learned there. Okay. Yeah, so we lived there, we could eat well, mm -hmm. but then I was always very tired and confused. Mm -hmm. 
because of the chores, because they were taking care of four or five people every day. A 12-year-old girl, mm -hmm. it wasn't easy for me. Mm -hmm. Especially going to the river every day from after school, it was tough for me. Mm -hmm. So after one year, my mother comes back, comes back sick. And uh, I don't know what had happened with her spinal cord. So he, she comes home sick mm -hmm. and uh, meets uh, some Akorino, I think, along the way. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know where he, she met them. She, they pray for her and she says she was healed. And then the result will be to join the church mm -hmm. and tie a turban. At this time, is he, is she in Nakuru? No, she came back okay. to where we used to live, it, a place called Mairenya. Okay. Yeah, the other side of Nyahururu. Mm -hmm. So she comes back and joins that Akorino church because they prayed for her and she got healed, mm -hmm. according to how she claimed. And she, she ties the turban. Mm -hmm. Now that turban, we used to, because I also did it. Okay. After my mother tied it, I followed suit. So that turban, we could release it as the sisters do. Mm -hmm, or the yeah. angel Maria's, yeah, yeah. and then the men would put on aka, 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 these things we put on our babies, the, the to kofias, to, to nakuanga na tanini apa. Oh. So the men mm -hmm. would put on that, and it has a, a white portion mm -hmm. at the top. Okay. So we joined that church, mm -hmm. and the 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 which which doctor now is not happy about it. Mm -hmm. So they disagreed because he doesn't want people who are praying, especially in a loud vo voice mm -hmm. in his house. Yeah. Because now you see these are two kingdoms that wouldn't agree. Mm -hmm. So he started now giving us trouble, mm -hmm. problems. He burned our clothes. He threw at us out of home, mm -hmm. that place. And now my, my mother figures, because he has a land somewhere in, uh, in the village, mm -hmm. a place called uh, Ormoran, down at Ngarua, mm -hmm. very far away from Nyahururu. She figured she would go there, start a new life from there. So she builds a house, a two-room house with mud uh, mm -hmm. at the side, and yeah. the roof was iron sheet. Mm -hmm. And we start living there. Mm -hmm. we, we were given clothes by the church. Some of them were to Changia. Mm -hmm some clothes and house items like bed, mattress. At this time, Badu Nenda Shule Yeah, I used to continue okay. with school. Even when she left, I continued with my school. I think when she left, I was in class three. And oh. I continued. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even when we moved now to that place, or Moran, I, I, I still joined another school. Okay. Now in class five. So we started living there. But now the man figures that we went to his land. Mm -hmm. And he was still very angry with my mom. But mom was, I think she loved her. She loved the man. Mm -hmm. Because she, if she didn't love him, she would not continue living in his property. Yeah. So the man comes to that place and destroys the house and burns everything again. And we are left with nothing. Wow. After that, we now moved from that place. It was called Tang Tanginyeusi. Mm -hmm. And we, we went now to the town center of that place and rented a very small, small house. Mm -hmm. And we started, the church of Tangiadas again, gave us uh, other clothes and gave us other items like beds, beddings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we started now living again in that uh, town center. And I continued with school. So now the man and my mom, the witch doctor and my mom, it was over between them. Mm -hmm. So my mom is now on her own. Yes. And the man did not ever come again. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ever met again with him. So I continued going to school. But now my mom becomes a very big prophet in this Akorino church. Mm -hmm. And uh, she could prophesy to people. She could come to your home and start uh, removing some witchcraft under your, maybe under your bed, mm 
mm -hmm. or under a chair in the city, those things. Okay. She had experience of doing those things. I think from now the experience with the witch doctor. Mm -hmm. Maybe she knew how they... Because when you come and you remove those inner things, mm -hmm. she he will utter some words around those things with a, a watch he had. Ah. So he would utter words and then he tells you to go and maybe hide it under the bed or something like that. Okay. So maybe she knew how to just go around it. Mm -hmm. So she, she started going from one town to another, leaving me alone with nobody to take care of me. But now the good thing about that place was that the church, the people in the church were around me. Mm -hmm. So they used to take care of me, like give me food, give me soap to wash my uniform and all that. But I used to go to school barefoot, sometimes hungry, without anything. Mm -hmm. And I could lack many things. Teachers were tolerant with me. They could buy books. But you know, those days, schools were paid school fees. Mm -hmm. There were this for building, there was this for PTA and all those things. Yeah. So no one was taking care of that for me. Mm -hmm. My mom would go for a month, for two or three weeks. When she would return, I would ask her for school fees mm -hmm. or maybe buy me books or do this or that. She would start insulting me. Why are you telling me that? Where do you want me to get the money from? I also did not go to school, so it is not of any importance to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I could not keep up. By this time, I, will, I had done class five. I was almost now completing class six. Mm -hmm. By the time I am, we are closing in December so that we go and open in, in January, you join class seven. Mm -hmm. I did not go back okay. because it, there was a very big debt. I did not have the necessities I needed for continuing to, to, to go to school. Mm -hmm. So that is where, up to here, I went to school, okay. after class six. Okay. Yeah. So after I drop out, I become this girl in the church. Mm -hmm. I would go to visit anyone I want. I would go to for youth camps, any seminar. I was available for anything mm -hmm. around me. Yeah. So I continued with that, that life. And now with, with the ability my mom is doing with prophesying to people and all that, mm -hmm. she, she thought I, I am becoming a too much burden for her mm -hmm. and decided to marry me off, marrying me off in a, in a prophetic way because she claimed the Lord is saying I marry one of the pastors in the church. Mm -hmm. Now that young man had, already, had just finished Form 4 high school. Mm -hmm. He had just been ordained mm -hmm. as a pastor mm -hmm. in, the, in the church, yeah. in that same church. Mm -hmm. And then she, he also had gotten a job. Like he had achieved a lot in a very short, of, a short period of his time after school. Mm -hmm. So my mother thought, I am, he is the ideal person for me to get married to. And she prophesied that uh, the Lord says I marry him. Mm -hmm. And she starts planning for my wedding. Uh, in that church, mm -hmm. weddings were very, very cheap. Now, it is your mother who has prophesied. Yes. Okay, I'd like us to take a short break. Mm -hmm. Then we'll come and continue. All right. Montek Media, capturing your magical moments. So now, uh, your mother was prophesying in this church yeah. and his, uh, she started planning for your my wedding. wedding. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she plans for my wedding mm -hmm. and uh, my wedding is very easy to organize because in that church we used, they, they used to get married in the church dress mm -hmm. which was long up to the ankle okay. and you had a belt with some colors indicating your gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, a Corino church has many things, mm -hmm. beliefs. Okay. So with that dress, I was good to go. She only uh, made a, 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 the, the crown, mm -hmm. the one that covers the bride, and a tail that comes and is put on the husband or the, the, the groom. Mm -hmm. So did you date? No, 
We we only saw each other during church activities. Okay. I did not even know what type of a man he was. Mm -hmm. He did not know who I was. He, just because the Lord said, mm -hmm. nobody asked any questions. Okay. So the the wedding was completely was was uh, now prepared, and we did it. After three months preparation, mm -hmm. yeah. we did it. Uh, and we started living together and uh, after some time the man now start, starts to think and realizes she was, he was tricked into this mari marriage mm -hmm. by my mother. How did he realize? Because uh, there were things he was told I would do when we get married. Mm -hmm. Like I would prophesy, mm -hmm. I would be a great uh, help in his ministry because you see he's a pastor. Mm -hmm. So when he started, he, he waited to see me do those things and they did not, uh, he did not see me do it. He started now questioning. I was told this and this, so what is happening? So he, he started asking me, did you not dream and so as getting married? Mm -hmm. Did you not see this and this? Did you, s okay, I was like, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. Because myself, I got married. Yes, I was young because I was 16 years. But you, you see now this girl is starting now to grow up. Mm -hmm. And you start, feelings, you, you start having feelings for the opposite uh, gender. Mm -hmm. So when, I, when we are in the church, I am attracted to this young man. Okay. Uh, as, as stupid I was, as I was infatuations and all that. Mm -hmm. So I started feeling love for him. Mm -hmm. Actually, I fell in love with him at that tender age. And I felt if the Lord said I, I need to marry the, him, I was OK. How old are you? At 16 this years old. 16, yes. OK. Yes. So I, I got married because I loved him, even though I was very young. Mm -hmm. But him. He, I don't know his reasoning. I don't know whether he loved me, even today. But uh, now, after we started living together, he starts mistreating me. And when he realized he was tricked into it, he started regretting. Mm -hmm. And he starts thinking, I need to look for my own choice of a wife. Now he starts looking for girls. Uh, he could flirt with them. Some would come, you see he's a pastor, so I used to host many people mm -hmm. in, in my home. Yeah. So he could flirt with any girl, and he never cared how I feel. Mm -hmm. So he, he, as we continued to live together, he became pregnant with my first pregnancy. I lost it at six months. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the abuse and all that. I don't know. And then I got, an, I got pregnant again now for my daughter. And I, it, I, I, I carried it to term by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But I carried it with a lot of fear because of what had happened. So I was very careful. I could not even travel in vehicles because of bumps and anything. Because I thought if they, a bump would go wrong and my, I would lose my baby. Yeah. So I took care of that pregnancy with a lot of caution. Mm -hmm. Until it was now ready to, I, I went and delivered my daughter. But by that period, now I'm, I'm, I have gotten my daughter. We are still continuing to live together, but in a very boring way. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about the other. We don't. Uh, a lot of time we are not talking to each other. The day would go without a word in mm -hmm. the, between us. Uh, he would leave the house, go to work, spend the whole day out there, come back in the evening, we'll just do one or two things, and eat, goes to sleep. That okay. was the kind of life we, we lived. Okay. But now when there is someone in the house, like a visitor, he's mm -hmm. very jovial, talking to them, cracking jokes, yeah. So I realized I was the one who, who was really boring him mm -hmm. because of what he thought he was tricked. Yeah. So during 
this period I'm now taking care of my baby. Mm -hmm. a, a girl comes from the same church. He, she says she needs someone to take care of her school fees. He, she asks for the church to help her mm -hmm. continue with the school because her parents had separated and the father refused to continue educating her. Mm -hmm. So she asks in the church who can help her. The youth, there was a youth fund she was targeting, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the one who was in charge did not agree. My husband, now my ex, was uh, a, a, the chairman of the youth mm -hmm. countrywide. But when he got married, he handed over to his chair, mm -hmm. vice. Mm -hmm. But now that, that the one who he handed over to did not agree to take care of this girl. Mm -hmm. He did not release the youth fund. Mm -hmm. Because she was claiming if she goes to school and finishes, she will get a job and pay back the money. Mm -hmm. But now the reasoning of that young man, maybe he thought it will not happen, maybe the money will, will just sink. Mm -hmm. So he refused. Okay. So now the girl starts to talk to individuals in the church. Uh, and everybody he, she talked to, the only one who was willing to help her was my husband. Mm -hmm. So she, the husband comes to me, asking me whether we can help, mm -hmm. and I agree because it is a good thing to do. Yeah. It is a godly thing to help others. Yes. So, and I was also in the process of going to the rural place now to take care of my home at the village. Mm -hmm. So I am tired of the life in town mm -hmm. and you see the kind of life we were living with him. So I felt, let me just go to Ushago. Nikamambia mm nijenge na nihamishe. -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I moved. So when the girl was joining, starting to go to school, mm -hmm. I, I was in the process of moving now from town to my rural place. At this point, and I joined high school and yeah. I joined campus. Okay. And I joined high school, mm -hmm. form two, form two because okay. she had done only form one mm -hmm. before the parents disagreed. So she joins form two. And now I, am, I have moved now to my home and I leave them. She joined first a boarding school, but it became so expensive. So we now changed her to a day school, mm -hmm. where you, she, she go in the morning and come back in the evening. So we started li she started living with us, but now I have moved. I left them. When I went to home, mm -hmm. I started farming carrots, mm -hmm. onions, cabbages, mm -hmm. and potatoes. I could send them some of my farm produce to come and what you enjoy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we are okay. helping. Yeah. So in the process, I got pregnant with my son now. Mm -hmm. And I will be coming for maternal clinics. What are they called? Postnatal? Clinics, Those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. I would come, maybe after a month. Those days we could only go for a, in a, one month once. Mm -hmm. So I could come once a month uh -huh. to be checked on. And I come with my daughter now, mm -hmm. and I am pregnant. So in that season, I start hearing rumors. We had a church at where we used to live in Nanyuki town. Mm -hmm. So I, ha I start have hearing rumors that this pastor has two wives, and I could wonder what are they saying. Mm -hmm. Because I had, although we, we were not so much in love, I... I still loved him mm -hmm. and I trusted him mm -hmm. so much yeah. such that I could not imagine that he could take any girl or, any, or even another wife. Mm -hmm. But now I start hearing rumors because the, he could escort her to school holding hands and all that. Wow. So people are seeing. Mm -hmm. So they start spreading rumors and I could hear them and I disagree. Mm -hmm. I denied. Because I really trusted my husband. Mm -hmm. 